record. So you can now share, you can share the Facebook Live on your platforms. So okay, so I, I'm there and I don't see anything. Wait. Go to my, go to my, um, my Facebook page and then you There you are. Yeah, there it is. Just came up. There we are. Hi. Let's see how long it takes to see my fingers move. So you can share it. Yeah. So share it on your, um, on your Facebook page and on your, um, the Facebook group. Okay. That you it's, it's shared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just I'm just clicking all the names. It says invite friends. So I'm just clicking everybody on the on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the fact that we gave the wrong time, you know, this is my fault. So okay, hi Sushaila. If you have any questions, put it in the post box or in the comments, okay? So I'm just talking to people who are on the Facebook live. Perfect. Thank you. Have you done it? Have you invited your key friends? <clears throat> I hope so. I don't know. <laughs> I just want to say, I just want to say hi to everybody. Uh, this is Angelique Song from the Super Women Babes Club with Richard Alexander Arsic. And um, for those who don't know Super Women Babes Club, I basically came up with the idea to set up Super Women Babes Club when I was uh, studying with Tony Robbins in strategic intervention coaching training. And I realized by then that um, I was very strong in what I call the superwoman archetype and that I had no clue how to be the babe, how to be, to step into my feminine. And I was so obsessed with this subject that I started um, basically gathering all the information I could find to understand more about this topic because I realized that it was the key to basically um, understanding more of my, my truth, um, which is not just the woman who was going to make things happen, the woman that was powerful, the woman that didn't need help, the woman that didn't need a man, and that the woman who couldn't even ask for help. So when I did this, I basically set up a forum, a Facebook group and a website, and I just invited a lot of the Tony Robbins women community and men's community. And what we did was we organized a lot of online lounges. So we just basically had a lot of intimate uh, gatherings with women and men talking about like a type of, you know, a lot of different topics. We interviewed a lot of experts as well. And at one point, we also started uh, organizing uh, live events in London. And because I don't live in London anymore, because I'm now in Amsterdam, I decided to actually create a platform to bring it more online uh, because that will really help us spread, you know, basically increase, increase the reach. Uh, imagine that in a live event, we could host like 18 to 25 people. On an online event, we could have up to like 200, 300 views and maybe in the, in the future, more and more people. So tonight we have here with us, Richard Alexander Arsic, who is somebody I met via Facebook. Uh, Richard was so brave to ask, add me as a friend. And then at one point we started chatting and I was so intrigued by his, um, what his work was. Of course, he was involved with an organization which I really, really admire, which is called the Mankind Project. And, um, and I knew about the Mankind Project because when I read about it, I was so jealous that I wasn't a man and that I couldn't go. And I literally swear to God, I wish that I was a man and that I could go and be part of the Warrior Weekend. So you can imagine how much superwoman I have in me. I wanted to join the Warrior Weekend. But um, maybe hidden in there, I also had a deep need to know that men were doing their work, that men were also doing their initiation into greatness and overcoming their shadow. And so when we started talking, I started getting to know Richard very well. And ever since then, Richard has actually been initiating other new projects. He, he's been writing a book. He set up his own platform, his own website. And he's been involved with basically uh, reclaiming your inner throne community. And just mm -hmm. recently, he launched an online training, which is called the Heroes Training. So Richard, please tell us, how did you get involved with this? Because I know you started as an engineer. 
<laughs> very better, you know, what is it? Uh, left brain type of work. Um, oh, yeah. how, did you, how, how did you know that you had to do your work? I mean, I just want to, for people to get to know you. Thanks, Angelique. Um, how did I get to know that I needed to do the work? I, I didn't know that I needed to do the work. But what I did know was that there was a calling. There was something pulling me forward from the middle of my chest that I couldn't quite answer or, or give it a name. Yeah. And no matter what I did, no matter how many relationships I got into, no matter how many businesses I started, no matter how much I was showing up in food banks and leadership groups in my community, it just all seemed like band-aids on symptoms of society. And I, I, I just band-aids on my own self yeah. little little pieces of fragmentation of myself here and there that yeah it, it, there's no one thing and it's all things that brought me to this it's it was the 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 need to to really make a change and when i did my first taste of men's work which was called the shift shift networks men's initiation and it was powerful because I didn't know what men's work was. I had done a UPW at that point. I'd done a lot of other work, shaman work, uh, channeling work, all kinds of different, um, what I would consider wooji wooj, very follower <laughs> of Neil, Neil Donald Walsh and, and Conversations with God, which I thought were brilliant books and Abraham and all, the, all those beautiful things that were out there, but something was missing. And when I discovered men's work, it was like, wow, that's it. That's the place. That's the place that started me on this journey. That was in 2010, and I've not looked back. Um, Explain to us, because there's men here, and that are, there are women, uh, women here as well. Hi, Brad. Hi, Jeffrey. Hi, Beth. And um, what, how, how do we understand what men's work is? Like, you know, what is specifically different about men's work? Because um, the, the way that I understood men's work was I read about it when, you know, I heard about... Um, the men going into the woods and drumming together. And then of course, uh, Robert Moore, uh, the great mm -hmm. analyst, um, you know, doing the work with archetypes. Um, but what is the, what do you mean with men's work? Well, it's, it's doing work with men, like obviously together. Uh, and that work consists of facing shadows, yeah. being vulnerable. And typically men are not vulnerable with each other. There's, there's a, a, a macho-ness, a chest out that, you know, if, if I let myself be vulnerable, then I'm weak. Because that's what, it's, what we're taught through growing up, through commercials. It's, yeah, it's, it's the weakness that I think that keep men apart. Yeah. And once I stepped into that and I was loved and blessed by other men and, and, and shown that my, wasn't, my stuff really wasn't any different than any other man's. Uh, issues at the time we all shared it anytime a man would start doing work we, we have a saying in the mankind project like that man's doing my work for me because we yeah. share so much yeah i can imagine so um hi janina no, <laughs> hi to people who are communicating yeah us. if you have any questions just set them you know put them in the in the comment box because we are here to actually serve the community so and um, so can you tell me about the evolution of you actually doing the new mankind project and then working with reclaim your inner throne and then even setting up the heroes training? Um, because, you know, they all have their, you know, they're all, they're all quite different, but they all have mm -hmm. you know, the same theme. What is it that's, you know, what is it that's different about the heroes training that you felt had to be birthed so that people could experience that and especially that you could give that to the world? Well, one of the things that I, I noticed was, was lacking in, like MKP is wonderful. There's the Mankind Project does great work. It's a, it's a good first step to, to, to really dis discover who you are as a man. And it's powerful. I recommend every man go do this wherever you are on your journey to go and taste this. And what it is because we know. So it's, 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 yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a 48 hour initiation. It's a, it, it's, it's a hero's journey. You're taken down um, we're, we're stripped away of all of our things where we're, it's, it's a, it's a, I, I don't want to give too much away because it's, it's important that we, that men who go really don't know what's going to happen because that's part of it. And it's about trusting the process and know that you will be loved through that whole journey 
in a way that you've never felt loved before by men. Um, that could be scary. That could be scary because I'm not talking about gay love or any of those other love. It's just, it's, it's just men honoring men, supporting men, mentoring men through the passage of their lives. It's a, it's a beautiful program. And then when I got through that and I met some other people through that whole process, I, I met um, Ivan Shellam, who was the original, uh, created the masculinitymovies.com, and then he created Reclaim Your Inner Throne. And I took the course. I, I was sitting in a virtual men's group with him, and I watched him develop the course and bring all of the angst he was feeling about creating the course um, in, the, um, in, in our virtual men's group. Yeah. And he it kept asking me to come, asked me to come. Finally, on the third round, I decided to go. And what that one did is it just, it really got in touch with the addictions. It really got in touch with the pieces of myself that I was, I was basically numbing through so many different addictions. And I don't mean just alcohol and, and drugs and things like that, the videos, food, uh, gestures, hand gestures, uh, sayings, it's all good. A lot of the things that I was doing to stay, yeah, exactly, it's perfect. All the things that I was doing to stay disconnected from the feelings in the moment. And once I stepped through that and really felt what was going on in my body in a larger way, from that course, I actually, my body has become a, a barometer for me. I can feel what's going on around me and in me that gives me a much better understanding of what's happening with, with myself in relation to other people because I can feel them so deeply now as I've stripped myself, stripped those addictions, stripped those pieces of myself away that were blocking me from accessing that. And really, they were just false beliefs about myself. So Reclaim Your Inner Throne was a very powerful journey. And I'm now assistant course leader for the last three rounds. We're actually in a round right now. We have 12 men going through and they're at the, they're at the abyss right now. They're at the bottom of the curve and it's beautiful and it's painful and there's tears and there's anger and there's joy and there's every emotion you can imagine as we go down this journey, because those are the emotions that most men have been conditioned not to have. Yeah. So we're, we're bringing the men back to their innocence, to the, that time from when they were three, four, five years old, where the, the world was just this beautiful place. And where people told them man up. And they did tell them that. Yeah, and they did. Don't cry. The girls, Don't be a sissy. The yeah. girls would be loved if they showed their vulnerability, and the men mm. would be, you know, basically almost punished. And uh, basically, that they were wrong for having feelings, and, mm -hmm. and that's something I intuitively know as a as a woman because I've studied this stuff. But I think that a lot of people don't actually realize that that is what's happening, and that that actually then um, we pay a big toll for men mm -hmm. doing that, not just the men. Oh, we sure do. Yeah, and even the parents. The parents say that because they don't want to deal with the emotion. So it's their own stuff coming through and being levied on the child. They don't know better. No, exactly. Yeah. So when we do these healings, we're actually healing seven generations backwards and seven generations forwards. Things shift. And that's why I do this work. This is why this work is so important to me. Because that man, when he goes, when he goes through and learns more about himself, he's going to come home and show up differently for his children. And that's where the change that I want to see on this planet is. It's not necessarily going to happen in my lifetime, and I'm okay with that. But the wounds will be be less deep, not as deep, in that man's children. Yeah, that's important for me. As we're talking, I'm just asking a question, which is, you know, because we've both done the Tony Robbins work, where actually we realize that when a man doesn't wear the pants, the women will step into that challenging, sure. demanding, um, you know, testing way, the storms of the feminine. And very often men don't know how to actually be the loving, the, the, the king, the, the positive king, the positive warrior, the positive lover, mm -hmm. where, you know, holding the space for her storms. So what is the difference between a man having to be that amazing rock when women, you know, break down and challenge them and push them away and really all they, all they want is just love. Mm -hmm. And you guys doing the work where you're actually bringing men closer to maybe their helplessness or their fear or their despair. Can you tell us a little bit? Because Tony is teaching 
you know, I now I am the voice, you know, basically to be strong, to be, um, to be, to lead, to actually be the clarity, mm -hmm. um, you know, to tap into the positive uh, voices of all these archetypes. And what is the difference with the work that you're doing? Is it, um, is it almost complementary, would you say? Well, I think for a man and to stand in that strength and, that, and, uh, and be in that place, he has to know what his weaknesses are. He has to know the pieces of himself and really own all those pieces. So the, 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 the I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy uh, voices that, that tend to, to go speak it, whisper in everybody's ears have to be understood as the false beliefs they are so that they can actually stand in their power, know when to love and to reach out, know when to say, hey, no, that's a boundary. You're not that. No. With confidence that you're honoring yourself. And I think what happens in a lot of these relationships is that men don't honor themselves and they give themselves away. They don't say no, hoping that the, the woman will be the mother to them or give them the, to feed the needs that they believe they have or they think that they have without ac ever actually speaking them. But when you don't meet my needs, because I've never really told you what they are. I don't even know them. I, well, exa exactly, but I get resentful. Yeah. She didn't do this stuff and, and the stories start. Yeah. It's about unraveling those stories so those stories are not playing a role in the relationship anymore. It's about seeing that those stories are what they are. They are just a story that are based on something that I was looking for when I was four, not when I'm 50. <laughs> I maybe I, I want to be held. Sure, I want to be caressed and I want to be loved, but I'll ask for that. Yeah, I'll ask for that for my partner. You know what? I I I'd like to be held right now. I've sat in groups where I've held men and let them weep and cry like babies on my shoulder and stroke their head because their fathers would never do that for them. And I've held women in the same way, and I've been held that way. So it's okay to have those emotions. It's okay to be strong, but it's not about always being this pillar of strength. You know, we're not that. And, and when we continue to push ourselves into that, again, we're, oh, there she goes again. <gasps> I got to get into some thing. Maybe I don't want to be in that thing. Maybe, it's, maybe I want to cry and vent. <laughs> because we are, we are all of those things. We are masculine. We are feminine. And our feminine has been repressed so much over the years that, we're unable to be in that space, especially with our women, because oh my God, they're, he's weak. He's not a white. He's not a white. A knight on a on a shining armor on a white horse type of thing. He's actually got feelings, and he, he does. He is vulnerable, and he is just a little boy inside. Of course, we know that, and a lot of the time, what like conscious women try to do is try to make a man conscious. And, you know, with men that actually, and, but we do it in the wrong way almost because we're women and we do not have to. So, as soon as I heard you say, make a man conscious, I kind of went, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but We try to push them and like say, read this book or come to this course with me. You know, you see a lot of the, the courses. There's more women than men. Mm -hmm. And don't stop. And don't and stop inviting. Thankfully, though, recently, you know, especially with Tony Robbins' work, you know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of men. And I think it, it has to do with, you know, there's more, um, the younger generations are more aware that they, that they have to do this work. But now you're coming up with a hero's training. And that's very, a very different dimension again. Richard, can you tell me what is your definition of a hero? And this is my lawyer side, you know, before we have clarity about you know, the Webster Dictionary understanding of a hero. What is your understanding of a hero? A hero to me is somebody who owns who they are fully, all the good parts and the bad parts. But in that space can act from a place of decision and choice rather than reaction. And that's what the hero's journey is really all about. It's about not reacting to what's going on but choosing your response based on clarity of who we are as a person. Because it all starts here. It's this relationship is the, full, the, the, the first and foremost relationship that has to be intact before I can go out and really stand with another clearly and cleanly without levying my wounds on the other through judgments, projections. Absolutely. Judgment and projections. and. Um... Of course, the shadow work, you know, the dragon. 
-hmm. how, how, so basically when you, we look at uh, Joseph Campbell's model and we look at, you know, slaying the dragon or befriending the dragon or whatever it is, can you walk us through maybe your course, uh, maybe help us understand what is the call? How do people recognize the call, the men? Let, let's talk about men for now. And how do they not answer the call? Because I want this to be, you know, be very practical for people who are not studying Joseph Campbell. Right. Not studying Jungian analytical psychology. Well, one of the things that um, Brad uh, Finkeldie is my uh, partner in this, and he's been, he's, he's the structure guy. And I'm the heart guy, the guy that's going to dive in. And, um, and I love the way we work together. And what, what this course uh, has morphed into is the men in the last mount round brought something. You know, we had one gentleman, for example, who wrote a book that really challenges the Abrahamic faith by shifting what has happened in there and he was very scared to bring that out because he thought he was going to get judged but it was a powerful book he's a scholar he studied all these languages he studied so much to bring to, to bring this out but yet his own self-worth held him back from something that i think was very important to the world and to himself and through the, the hero's journey, through taking him on, what is it that he wants and, and, and opening that and challenging him in a, in a loving way and then holding space when things got challenging for him along that journey so that he could actually bring that out with confidence and clarity. So it's, it's in a way, it's almost like a mastermind where we're, 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 we ask men to bring something. It could be a relationship. It could be a new business. It could be whatever it is that they're standing at the edge of them wanting to step into. We clear the path. They clear the path, actually. I just showed them that. Maybe the path's over there. Maybe there's something over here. Here's the machetes. Go start hacking at it and, cl and clean your own path into the forest so you can find your truth. So we, we look for the truth in, in that, for the, help them find that truth so that they can actually bring their gifts to the world. And that's what this is all about. We all have gifts. And, and the more that we can be fully present with who we are and how those gifts are showing up, I can bring those out. Everyone can bring their gifts back to the village and share them because it really the world, the village, I call it, needs our gifts. It needs the beauty that every person is rather than just sitting at home and watching, dancing with the ice skating stars. Bring it out because you're beautiful. Every one of you is beautiful. And you've got something to share. I want to know what it is. The world wants to know what it is. They're waiting how, for you. How would somebody recognize, you know, somebody who's maybe not as well versed in this type of jargon that we use, how would somebody recognize that they would benefit a lot from this work if they were a man? Because I think women sort of intuitively know that they have to do this work, sort of. Um, but how would a man, you know, a man who doesn't have any friends who go to Tony Robbins, don't have any friends who, you know, do meditation or they don't do yoga. How would they know that they, that there is more and that, um, that there is a call, but they're not answering the call. Could you drop back to that level? of? of oh, well, I, I can only speak for me. I, I felt a, a, a tightness in my chest that started at the top of my chest and went into my belly. There was always there. There was just something that I kept feeling I was on edge and I was a little bit twisted inside. And until I stepped into my, my gifts, it was, it was there no matter what I did. And I kept looking for the perfect relationship, the beautiful home, the right job, the next project. To, to somehow fix it, but it never, it never went away. Yeah, oh, oh, exactly, outside myself. Yeah. So that's the key is that, you know, are you searching? Are you getting the new cars? Are you buying all these things to try and get something? When I have, then I'll be. Exactly. And if you're doing that, you might want to have a look at what's happening in your life right now and how this might be showing up over and over and over again. So and maybe it's time for another path. You know, the addictions, consumerism, workaholism, uh, acquisitional type of uh, endeavors, where it's all about getting something from the external world, filling something that could only mm -hmm. come from a deep, uh, a deep 
owning of our true self. Although, you know, for a man, it's a bit, um, you know, there are not a lot of role models of understanding, you know, what the true self is, because, you know, we only, maybe we're, 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 we're lucky if we see it, let's say, in a movie, you know, or we hear it in a myth, but then it's so symbolical that we're like, you know, uh, gosh, what is that person in the Greek history, or this person in this animated movie, like uh, Neo in the Matrix, and I'm just a regular guy, I'm just a, a dad, or I'm just a banker, or I'm just like a school teacher, or I'm just, you know, um, a 19 year old kid who's thinking, you know, should I be an artist or should I be, a, you know, a computer programmer? So what's the question? <laughs> I'm just trying to answer the question for myself. I'm just reading. I mean, I can give you my diehard speech that I, that I love to, to, to use. Where, and after that, where, I will share what Brad, what Brad shared. I haven't read it. Oh, per Here's perfect. The Die Hard speech. The Die Hard speech. So there's Die Hard sitting at home watching Dancing with the Ice Skating Stars. And he gets the knock on the door. And he goes to the door and there's the guy standing there with the suit saying, oh, Die Hard, we need you to come out here and save the world. Like the bad guys are here. And he's like, oh, I don't do that anymore. I got the wife, kids. I got the, the TV going. Well, get out of here. But then something changes, something shifts, something happens to the wife, the kid gets kidnapped, something, something shifts in, in our lives that makes us go, what the fuck is going on here? You're referring to Die Hard, the movie. I'm talking, yeah, the series. It's, it's the same process over and over again, right? I mean, you know, it's the same thing where they come and knock, knock on the door, right? Bruce Yeah, Bruce Willis, yeah. I didn't see that movie. Again, it was oh, oh he, there, was, oh, there was like three or four of them, wasn't there? I don't know how many there was. But so he goes out and he starts doing what he does best, which is, well, in his case, it's, it's, it's killing people and getting to the root cause of whatever it is that's really bad out there. And he's hanging by a thread and he's just dying on the edge. He's almost dying. And I'm sitting there watching. And I'm gripping my, 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 my seat and everything. And I'm going, holy fuck, you go, guy hard. Go, brother. And I can feel it viscerally moving through my body. The feelings that I'm watching this guy elicit in me. Mirror neurons. And I want that feeling to be in your life. I want that to be the feeling you have about your own life. Like, yeah, let's go. Yeah, it's going to be challenging. Yes, it's going to, it might be, it might hurt. But wow, look what's there waiting for me. As I, as I make those changes, as I step into that uncomfortableness about who I am, as I, as I walk through that door that was never there before, but suddenly it's there and I got a key and I can open it into something new, something different, something I know more about myself that I can now share with others. And that's the gift of who you are. And, and without and the, the, every hero's journey always ends with the, the hero coming back and sharing those gifts. And then the next cycle starts. It's, it's an ongoing cycle. The circle never ends. It just keeps going. It's a spiral. Every day is a hero's journey. This, me coming on this today, this call, was a hero's journey for me because I'm scared shitless. I don't do this all the time. So I got butterflies in my stomach. And I don't know. Am I saying the right things? People are going to judge the shit out of me? I don't know. And you know what? I really don't care too much either. But I do want to. I do want people to love me. I do want people to to come to the course and really discover more about who they are. And you know, I'll live if they don't. The right people will come to you. Brad was sharing. I think he was responding to my. Hi, talk. Brad. He was saying I felt lonely. So basically, when he understood that there was a call, I felt lonely. I felt I could do better. I knew I was more than who I was currently being in the world, but scared to be there. And then um, Beth from the US was sharing that as a parent, um, so I'm just gonna read her words, how about parents? Any words for me and my 18 year old son? Mm. That has nothing to do with him. I see these patterns. He has so many gifts he keeps hidden and happiness at bay. Mm. So is there something that you could say to like the single mothers who are working? Yeah, I, I, I can, because I, I was in Portland a few months ago. And there's a dear friend of mine who works with, um, with, with parents yes. and, and their children. And he asked me to come to one of the meetings. And it was amazing because I was watching everybody speak to how their son needed to be this and their daughter needed to do that. And, 
and, and, and that they just weren't talking. They weren't, they weren't being what they wanted them to be. And I, I, I listened for a while. And finally I said, what I've learned in men's work is that if I want a man to open up to me, I have to be vulnerable and I have to, I have to come in and enter their vulnerability with mine. So whatever you want from them, you must give them. You must give them, you must meet them where they're at and actually talk to them about what it was like when you were 18 and speak to them from that level of, of, I understand, I get this and I'm not making anything you're doing wrong. And I know how challenging it, it can be. And to be in that place and maybe throw an anecdote of what it was like when you were 18, be vulnerable. Even if it was something that wasn't so good, he's going to see you in a different light. He's going to look at you and go, wow, you're not this being that I put up on a pedestal all my life. You're actually a human too. Can I say something? I can imagine that if a mother shares to a son that it's very different than when a mother asks him to connect with a group of men. And then he has this group of men that are sharing as a man. Mm -hmm. Because a woman can never have the experience of a man, you know. And I, I don't agree. Know how do people say? Because there's so much research. Men and women are different. We are different biologically. Our our hormones are different. Our brains are different. Of course we are. And I don't want to disagree with you, but that conversation has to start somewhere. Yeah. So it comes from that conversation, from that meeting. Yeah. At, at, a, at a level then it can maybe well what about this group you know i heard about this mankind project group they they'll they 18 and up maybe they're that you might be a really neat weekend for you to go and exp experience that because now you've opened the channel without the channels open you can tell them all kinds of stuff we can go into the differences of what they are but if they're not hearing any of it it doesn't really matter and it needs to be experiential as well mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking, actually, it's very interesting what you saw, said is like, really, you know, my question was, how do we distort the hero's journey by not taking it? And you were t talking a, a, about a lot of endeavors that people think are the hero's journey, which is all the external projects, you know, how would, but couldn't it, couldn't it be that actually when you are doing a project, you know, that you are actually in your own, own hero's journey, but that you don't know that all the obstacles that are appearing, that actually they are part of the, basically the archetypes that you need to own and to actually reclaim your shadow and all that important stuff that we need to do when we, get to meet, you know, our dark side, our light side, our power. Um, do, you, do you see what I mean? So let's say somebody is not doing the hero's journey consciously, but let's say they set up a company or they, you know, they undertake, let's say they decide I'm going to run a marathon, whatever. That everything that appears in front of them, what I'm trying to say is maybe people cannot avoid their hero's journey. They're going to be on it whether they want it or not. Oh, sure. And wouldn't it be cool to be on if you were consciously rather than unconsciously? And I know that one of the things that we do on, the, and on this hero's journey is um, on the second last meeting, or is it the last meeting? Uh, sorry. Um, we actually have get, get from the work we've done, we find out what the vision and mission is for each man and woman. Mm -hmm. Because when, I, when we have a clean idea of what we're here to do, and it might be a very lofty goal because usually a vision is something that's never going to occur in my lifetime. Mine is I co-create a world of awakened men through healing, my, well, I should say awakened souls through healing myself and sharing that journey with the world. So it's a very lofty goal. It, it's, everyone's not going to be awakened in my lifetime. But what I do to service that is my mission. And my mission is to share that with the world. And I'm sharing myself with the world more and more all the time through these courses, through this online media right now. And when we have some clarity about what we're here doing, then suddenly the things that we are doing can have a new meaning. I'm not just going to work to do this. I'm going to work because, wow, I'm creating something here and seeing that vision and how it, it, can, it can suddenly shift and morph into something much larger than just going to work every day. Yeah.
especially if you're starting your own company and you have a belief in it. Now, if you're starting your own company just because you want to try and really make a lot of money, well, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of cool to make a lot of money. Are you going to take all that money and give it to charity? Okay, it might be nice too to put some more Band-Aids on, on symptoms. Or I'm doing this because the world needs this product and I realize that it's going to change lives so dramatically. And from that, I can start to look at how I can, I can help other ways in changing life because now I've got so much excess of money, I can show up differently in the world to help other people maybe start their own projects and get involved. There's so many things we can give back to. And it is all about giving back. It is about showing up fully in the world. When I, when we're talking about the subject, I was, I came up with the topic, which is the secrets of a man becoming a hero. And I felt that, you know, and I wasn't really sure what I meant with that, but I was like, God, I would like to know what the secrets are of a man who, who is becoming a hero. Because I think one of the things that is painful for a woman and especially for, you know, intimate partners or, you know, we as girlfriends or wives or mothers or we want to understand our father, you know, our brother, the man we love. Mm. But at the other side, men don't, you know, it seems like, you know, the, 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 the percentage of men that can actually voice it in that type of vulnerability at, at the same time empowerment is quite small. So. Can you maybe talk to us a little bit about, you know, what have you learned about the secrets of men becoming a hero? If you were to do a TED talk on the secrets of a man becoming a hero, what uh, would be the bullet points? Go within, look inside. It all starts in the core of our beings. And really look at the false beliefs. And those show up through feelings. How do you feel when your wife asks you to do something? How do you feel when, you're, when your father says, you're not good enough? Or you, you, you didn't get blessed by your father? How does it feel when somebody cuts you off on, on, on the road? What goes on in your body? Really starting to be conscious of the feelings that show up in our bodies and then the actions or reactions that occur in us once that happens. So I know, for example, and this is, this is my work. <laughs> when someone cuts me off, I get angry. I mean, well, not a big deal. No one got hurt. I, I, I want to tell a story. Mm -hmm. I can feel it already coming. I was driving back in Canada four or five years ago and I was doing, you know, 75 80 miles an hour in the left hand lane and this guy came flying up behind me he's flashing his lights like to get out of the way but there's cars all on the right i can't you know and he's right on my tail so finally i get angry and i i go really fast and i pull over and he goes shooting by and i'm like and i'm driving fast too now and he's driving fast and i'm angry because you i dated these either. men to be honest yeah, yeah you wanted me to get out of the way next to these men in the car yeah. and was having road rage and then all of a sudden he went shooting across all the lanes and then went off on a, on a, uh, one of the side, like the exits. And I was like, yeah, you asshole. And, I'm driving. and all of a sudden it hit me. What if he was racing to his day, dying mother's bedside, bringing his child to the hospital. It shifted me so much in that moment. And it was my mind that shifted me wasn't really anything else. I could have made up all kinds of stories about that. I could continue being angry, but the mind is powerful. So that story that I tell myself about what's going on around me is, is the key because it's the story that's going on inside of me that I'm projecting all around me. So if I don't like all these things that are happening, it's a good chance that those things are probably showing up inside of me and I don't like them. That's why I love Donald Trump. Excuse me. I, I know that that's not a really good thing to say. He's showing the world what a fucking asshole looks like. A moron that has no skills at, at, at he just reacts to everything around him. We created him. 
I know that. And he is actually going to show, I, in a lot of ways, he's going to save us from ourselves as we dive in more to, in our, into ourselves and go, wow, that's actually in me. He is actually in me. And I get to watch it play out in front of me. Not some polished man going, hmm, saying all the right things and speaking just the right way and just doing it. Doing what? Being a mannequin? So there's some good things there. And I don't want to get into politics because that's not what this is about. But this place of knowing ourselves and really getting into that work that, that is challenging because there's dark stuff in there. That's where the shadows come from. Was, but our shadows get, get alchemized into gold because they become our greatest gifts. I really, you know, from the work that I've done with the shadow, with uh, mostly constellation processes, because it's mm -hmm. a different type of energy work, the shadow will not shut up if you do not give it the space. And when you give it the space, actually the shadow becomes such an untapped source of power and creativity. So I always you know so of course from my love affair with Jungian analytical psychology and you know and understanding mm -hmm. the archetypes and what the shadow stands for the shadow is not just darkness the shadow is also light oh yeah you can't have shadow without light yeah and 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 really we cannot exist without the shadow um and the, and, and you know we you know that's the world of duality but um what I'm thinking about is um, you were talking about how, how difficult it is. I mean, isn't it more difficult if people don't do the work? I mean, it's like temporarily difficult in a type of challenging way. You're paying for the course, you agree to show up and then you agree to basically in a, in a safe space to be asked a lot of like difficult questions that you would never go under if you were in a like comfort zone, right? But yeah, you're not gonna have it out, out at the bar with the boys, that's for damn sure. But if you weren't but if you weren't going to do that, wouldn't life be much harder? So I want us to compare what is actually hard, right? It's like some people say, you know, um I'd rather be um what is it? I'd rather be I sometimes said it when I was young. I wish I was like a blonde surfer and I didn't know anything like it. No disrespect to, to blonde surfers. <laughs> I just thought my life would be easy if I, if I was a surfer girl and that mm. was all I wanted, you know, just to be on the waves and not to think, but actually I think a lot. I, I question a lot. I, I do a lot of the work. And, and, and you are on the waves. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, maybe I am, but what I meant is, is like, but actually, when you compare what doing this work temporarily is, is with you, with you guys, it's eight weeks. It's eight yeah. weeks. Right? Yeah, two, two hours a night for, for um, once a week for eight weeks. Doing but that. The, I, I just want to add, and the yeah. thing that, that I, and we'll get back to that, and I just want to say that one of the things that I cherish in this work is that I love Tony Robbins. I love a lot of the work that's done, but it ends. Unless I'm willing to pay huge dollars in, in the continued um, uh, coaching and whatnot, and typically it's fear-based motivation, and that's not something that we use here at all. Um, we continue having a group. The groups meet every two weeks after. So they can continue, because it's never over. It's a process that keeps going on. So if I've got this safe group that I've just spent eight weeks with, I can continue to do that work because I have that familiarity and we continue to grow together as a group and, and, and as life challenges come along and life celebrations come along, it's a place to keep peeling that onion and, and doing the work. But as far as the comparison, ah, wow. I mean, comparison might be a person who's working 12, 14, 16 hours a day because they need to keep going and they need to just because if, boy, if I stop, I, you know, I'll be overtaken or I won't be good enough or I'll have all those, those little uh, voices that are going on in the, in the head that drive me, keep driving me. And suddenly I'm like, guys, I had a heart attack at 40 or a miscarriage or some disease, this ease in the body that shows up from all the stuff that's going on. I believe that this work actually unravels the disease 
because the, a lot of the cause of the disease goes back to our childhood. And that's where a lot of the wounds are that, that, that we look at. And so much time is spent trying to reject that and push those pieces of ourselves away that we don't through alcohol, through drugs, through eating, through socializing, through the, the media, multimedia, all the different ways that we can stop being present with ourselves. Those pieces are the ones that are screaming out to be loved. Those are the ones that the little boy was dying to be seen uh, you know, at some social functions. A little girl who put on a nice little dress and wanted to be pretty and everyone said, you did your hair was ugly or whatever it was. There was a, there's all these different things that show up in our lives that created this stuff. And we can bring those disowned pieces back into us and not reject them because they're part of us and embrace them and love them. See, a lot of the ones, a lot of the courses out there just say, oh, just, 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 those are just, just let that go. Just move into the next step. It's always going forward, always going forward. You know what? In order to go forward, we got to go back. We got to embrace those pieces. We got to bring all those pieces home. And in shamanic work, they call it soul retrieval. And it's true. It's about bringing those pieces back to us so we can be whole. It is about being whole. I can't be whole if, if I haven't embraced those pieces of myself that I've hid, hide, rejected, or denied all my life. And that's the shadow. It's almost using the archetypal model of Robert Moore, right? He works with the four archetypes. Mm -hmm. It's like you cannot, just claim, you cannot just pretend I'm a warrior, or I'm a king, or I'm a, I'm a child king, that you become despotic. But you, because you haven't looked into your, your shadow, you haven't looked into your warrior, you haven't looked into your lover, you haven't looked into your magician. Well, there's two sides of each, each archetype, right? Yeah, and then when you, you have the childish side of the archetypes, and then, you know, you have to integrate the four archetypes, you, and you have to evolve them from a childish pattern to a more mature pattern. Mm -hmm. And that is when, you know, that is when, you know, the shadow could be the beautiful, inspired lover instead of the, the what is it, the addicted lover. Yeah. You know? The shadow could be um, the benevolent, um, nonviolent warrior, rather than the angry man who is always angry. You know, yeah. the warrior who thinks it's all about the world making him angry. You know, so, so yeah, I, I, I know that completely. This work is about responsibility, and about doing it in the safety of you know being held by men who are showing it through their journey and through their you know um, basically commitment to working with men and women. What I found very encouraging was the videos, the, the testimonials of your first group, that mm -hmm. a lot of the men were talking about their partners and that their partners really, A, supported them, yeah. and B, their partners really started discovering more depth in these men, that these men sort of like, I don't know whether flourish is the right word, but they started to how would I say it? It's like these men started discovering more about themselves and in that sense started having a deeper bond with themselves and thus with the women in their lives. But that's just the beginning, right? The women right. Well, that was an unintended impact. Of course. Yeah. You know, because it's, it's not a relationship course, but it is a relationship course. Because all relationships start with, with, with this. So if I can be cleaner and clearer with who I am, it just goes, stands to reason I can actually be that with my partner because I don't have to fear saying something to her because I, I, if I speak my truth, and I used to do this a lot, I wouldn't speak my truth because I thought I would lose something. I wouldn't be loved anymore if I actually sp yeah. spoke what was going on for me. Yeah. And then that whole piece starts to bring everyone together because truth, well, the old saying truth will set you free. Well, it really does. And that's owning who we are. And it can be messy and it's beautiful and it's all those things. And when two people are, are experiencing that together, wow. When the compassion is there and the love is there and the challenge is there and the boundaries are there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's all parts. It can, is the king. Can you explain to us what is the decision to actually bring women in as well? Because hmm. I've done the Women Within work, which is the, the counterpart of Mankind Project. Mm -hmm. And I experienced it as very powerful to meet so many women and in the United Kingdom of all places, 
Mm -hmm. There's a lot, of, there's a culture of, you know, keep calm and carry on. Basically people do not discuss things. Um, but in the women within community, you know, I experienced a lot of English women, you know, basically facing their childhood wounds. And, and so, you know, I had to go there too. And, you know, all the baggage we carried with us and how we could basically be more of ourselves, listen more, more to ourselves. And when we start, when we finished that work, we did a co-ed work with the men of men mm. project in the UK. And that's how I understood, you know, how the men actually, you know, how honorable that work was. Um, so, but what I did notice is I felt it as very safe to do it just with women. Mm. Because I, I remember when we did the co when we did the co-ed work and we had to sit in a circle and listen to the men talking about women, it was scary. Sure. And then when we had to share as women what we thought about men, it was it was terrifying. Mm -hmm. A, we felt so naked that a man, all these beautiful men were listening to our fears and our vulnerabilities. I mean, let alone for women, to, for women to hear it, but to have the other sex that you want so much validation from to hear it, it was terrifying. So That's my true. question to you is, why did you decide to bring in women to the heroes training? Because it will mm. definitely change the dynamic. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of women when I was telling them about the course saying, well, why, how, how come we can't do that? And I was like, oh, honestly, <laughs> I don't, I don't know because I'm not taking men on initiation. I'm not um, bringing them through their, their father wounds and, and, but they may show up. They may show up as they start to uncover what's, I, I look at, I, I call it closing the gap. It's a, it's a simple thing. The, the course is, this is where I want to be. This is where I'm at. Yeah. What's in the middle? So, and that's true for anybody. And what's in the middle is false beliefs and old, old views of things and, and, and all the stories that I tell myself about who I am and who I want to be. So there's no reason why a woman can't go down that, that same journey and, and discover more deeply who she is at, at, along with men. Because I've been wanting to do work with men and women, and you know this, Angelique. I've spoke to this before. It is about men, but I want the, the final healing is when men and women come together when the math mask, divine mask and divine feminine actually are doing that kind of work together and can understand more about what's going on with each other without holding judgment. So I know that I have to hold a very strong center in this and it scares the shit out of me because I've not done it quite like this before and I don't know what to expect. And we're going to co-create this together because I truly believe that when we move into the, to the group setting and there's a, a connection that occurs that can never be repeated because this group is not going to be together again in that way. And magic happens in there. Things start to move because everyone's intention is to, 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 to bring themselves further into this, into their world. And with all these people wanting to learn more about their gifts and sharing their gifts, they're more willing to be vulnerable with each other. And no one's there is going to hurt. No one's there to judge. We're only there to hold space and to help let that story actually become the story that it is and you to step into your fullness and what is true. Because I, I have a, uh, before we go, there was a, a man who said to me once, and I use this quite often, I want to be standing beside you when you look in the mirror and see what I see. That was like one of the biggest things that anyone ever said to me. And it changed my life in that moment. And there's so many people that I want to stand beside in the mirror and I want them to see what I see. Because I see powerful, beautiful human beings and I want them all to see that. Because I know when many of you look in the mirror, you're not seeing that all the time. There's another story that's going on. Absolutely. Let's let that story go. Let's love it and honor it. But it's time for a new story. One that can start today. One that can start with you taking that step forward. And it is just one foot in front of the other. They're little steps that add into huge, huge changes. 
The only thing I can say is um, from my experience with the co-ed and also me working with uh, four of the, the Robbins Madonna's coaches mm -hmm. in a mastermind, I can only say that as a woman, I felt really honored to be like a confidant in the secrets of these men wanting to be heroes mm -hmm. and to really understand how different men and women are and not to judge them for it, but to love them for it. Mm -hmm. And for them to hear from my perspective, how I see things, but not to make it about competition or right or wrong, but to just say, wow, I never thought about that. Yeah. And to also know, but that, you know, that a lot of our heroes journey um, challenges will be also with, you know, the, the other sex. Sure. You know, oh, yeah. with ourselves, but also <laughs> probably with a good chunk of it, actually. <laughs> Absolutely. And a lot of the things that we think about happiness is projected on the other sex, you know, the, mm -hmm. the person that will come yeah. me and then to fix me. People are, you know, just as human or just as wounded or just as, you know, imperfect as we are and that they are doing, you know, their work at their own pace, you know, that must mm. be super powerful. Yeah. 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 Well, the, the group, it's one of the things we ask everybody at the very beginning is complete and utter confidentiality about what happens in that group. Absolutely. All the episodes are recorded and they'll be housed on a, a uh, secure website that only the people that have access to it can, can get into it. There's a forum there where they can continue to do answer questions and, and bring questions and they can cross talk with each other around what's going on. Maybe someone else has an insight. I don't have all the answers. That's for damn sure. But that other person over there, John, who's just sitting over there suddenly, he might have the answer to, to Beth issue that's happening in that moment and that's the beauty of the circle because when we sit in circle i get to see everybody's eyes and we use zoom so i do get to see everybody's eyes and the beauty of the circle is i can also see you behind you and you can see behind me and i can't i can't see what's behind me i can't see my shadow as well as maybe you can so i want you to say hey listen this is what i feel going on for you right now who better to see my shadow than than someone who might already have a piece of it themselves we've got this saying again another mankind project that if you spot it you've got it yeah. and so i want everyone to to look past what's what's right in front of us and see that darker piece so we can all heal from that because when that's when the light is brought in that's when the healing occurs and we can actually see it. if i can't see my shadow i can't i can't do anything about it it just leaks out of me um uh, unintentionally and that's where all the damage happens what i remember from the mankind project and i think you know the shadow work is such a fundamental piece and basically especially for the people that believe that they're doing something good to the world because they're sort of like if you don't own your shadow you're going to actually create more uh, polarity and more disowning of your wholeness but what i loved about the co-ed work at Mankind Project was what I remember was when a man would challenge a brother, challenge another man. Mm -hmm. If you challenge another man, you have to say, this is what I see. And this is what irritates me. That's called a clearing. I own it too. I yeah. own what I hate in you, what I want to kill exactly. in you. Yeah. I have it in me too. And imagine that men and women would talk to each other like that. Like mm -hmm. I, you know, I was telling a friend the other day that I had a dream about him and that the dream was pretty scary for me and amazing. But he basically told me, Angelique, you're seeing through your filter. He didn't see it as a judgment. He didn't see it as something, you know, Angelique is blah, blah, blah. He just said it, you know, he just told me about how the psyche works. And to me, that was like, wow, you know, it took away the whole charge mm. of this whole conversation instead of talking about, uh, fighting our shadow in projection and judgment is owning it and then coming to that understanding that when we have that clarity we are present yeah. it's the only way to become present if i can come to you owning my feelings and saying wow this is what's happening inside of me right now there's a, a a thing with i think it's nonviolent communication or something like that but it's it's where 
I come to my partner and say, this is what's happening inside me right now. What I heard you said was, yeah. and this is what came up in me. Can you tell me what you really said? Because typically what I hear and what I make things mean usually has a lot to do with what's going on inside of me, not so much about what's being said by the other person. Yeah. Just so they get that clarity of, of what do you mean? And clearings are, the, are, are amazing pieces of work where I get to talk about the data. What was the data of the interaction? Oh, he called me an asshole. Oh, okay. Anything else? No, that was it. How did that make you feel? made me feel, oh, I was awful. I don't like being called an asshole. I don't like being called names. And, and I get to, and what kind of a person does that? Well, an asshole does that. A, a person who doesn't think right. And I get to release all this energy because that's really what it is. It's the energy that I'm carrying around that particular, it's my reaction to that man telling, calling me an asshole is really what's at, at, at stake here. That's what's coming up in me. And once I can release that energy, then, then I, the, the question is, how's that person or how's that man a mirror for you. And then you, you know, the guy stops and if he's clean and clear enough, he'll go in and say, wow, my dad said that once to me when I was young and it really affected me. And I just, I, I just relived it all right here, right now. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for, for showing me that. And usually at the end of that, the two guys are hugging and loving each other. And I always add though, at the end to the man who's being cleared with is if any of this sticks, you might want to have a look at it. You might want to look at why you called this guy an asshole because it's really not about him, but I always got to leave a little piece there because there might be something in there for him too. But it's, um, yeah, it is interesting how it, it, owning, our, owning our reactions to whatever's going on is key. It's freedom. It is freedom. It is freedom. No. So um, about the women that would like to join. Hmm. Um, is there something you would like to share with them? I mean, I know you, you know, I know you as a person, as a friend, as somebody I love and somebody I trust, but the women that don't know you, I mean, how do they know they're going to be safe with you? I mean, mm. like, what are the things that you put in place? Hmm. You know? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I honestly, I, I know that through confidentiality, through, through when I sense something that shouldn't be going on or being said, I will jump on it and, and ask it to be reframed, to be looked at. My deepest desire is that we're not using, uh, bringing in our sex, sex gender. Our, our gender issues in and making, making women wrong because they're crying too much or whatever is happening. I'll do my best to, to hold the space with integrity and love with a big heart. I think the, the main thing would be to understand that um, when, you know, because I studied a lot of the feminine initiations, because men and women are initiated in different ways, according to the Jungians, you know, and, and mm. of course, um, I don't know what it is, is reality, but when I was studying it, it, I sort of attracted these, these initiations into my life. So the myths about female initiation are about the underworld. Mm. So it's about sexuality. It's about, you know, basically sure. being seen, you know, basically um, if you look at um, the Greek myths where um, Persephone and, uh, you know, basically what happened, um, you know, a lot of the rooms are about, you know, are, are are about gender and about sexuality and becoming a woman but also i think more recently you know there are i think i would say call them modern myths and they're probably less predominant in from you know from basically what what we know as the ancient cultures because i think the new myths that we have is women that don't know how to be vulnerable that don't know how to trust men that don't know yeah. how to surrender and that is the work I want to do with Superwomen Babes, which is really helping mm. women and men understand these challenges that we all face that are, you know, that we think is about the other sex, but it's not about the other sex. It's about ourselves. Right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. It's, it's, that's, it's challenging. I'm grateful you're doing that work. And um, I really don't, this is not about an initiation. I am not initiating anybody into anything except maybe deeper into their own lives. I, I'm not 
taking the boys from the village at 13 and bringing them out into the field to, or out into the jungle to, to kill lions or taking the girls, whatever the woman's initiation is. Uh, um, this was not what it's about. This is about just stepping more fully into your lives. And maybe having some of some work through Angelique might help you step into that more fully. Um, I, guess I saw that person in the window in the, in the back. Yeah. I don't know what time it is. Richard. Is this something that it's I haven't asked? That I, well, 206. Should I ask something that I haven't asked? Oh, okay. Anything comes to mind? Oh, should you ask something that you haven't asked? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. uh, the website, uh, you can get through it to, it's richardarsic.com, which is Richard, A-R-S-I-C, and the, uh, the direct link is theheroestraining.com, H-E-R-O-S, training.com, theheroestraining.com. And there's sign-up information there. If you have any questions, you can e email me at support at richardarsic.com. Um, my Facebook page is Richard Alexander Arsic. You can reach me through that page as well. Uh, I'm a pretty open book, and I'm here to serve. <laughs> yeah. So I just <laughs> really want to thank you, Richard, for this interview. I mean, I, I wanted to interview you for a very long time, but it, you know, we never knew when the right time was. And when I actually saw your website, I was like, wow, you know, I really want to know what you're up to. And, you know, and I didn't want to know it just as Angelique. I wanted to share it. With oh, I appreciate that. People. So, you know, keep on doing the great work. And, um, and uh, yeah, and if I can support you in any way, let us know. And of course, I hope that some of the people who are watching this know that you're running it online so people can join from any time zone, from any continent. And that, you know, if need be, you might even run, you know, you might run the groups in other time zones, not just. Yes, that's something we're talking about right now. If the, if the, if the demand is there, definitely we would run a, a course earlier in the day. So maybe seven o'clock or eight o'clock um, CET time which is, I think, 11, 11, 8 o'clock there is 11 a.m. here. So, um, yeah, we'd be more than happy if the demand is there to do that. Right now, it is at 4 p.m. Pacific time, which is 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, in the, the New York, I guess, time, time zone. Yeah, it's around midnight for us. Yeah. You know, I know, I know from my groups, when I was doing groups, I had people in Australia waking up at 5 a.m. to be in my group. <laughs> now I'm in masterminds where... People wake up, you know, at 6 a.m. on Sunday to, to be in the masterminds. You know, there are great people that just want to do the work. They don't care. Mm. Sleep is not that precious, to be honest. <laughs> right. if they just want to do the work. They want to be in the right group. And I'm sure you'll attract the right people. That always happens. Set the right intention. And people show up. I, I, I'm sure we will. And I, I'm hoping that, um, that people show up because we need you. The world needs you. You need you. And also the price is amazing value. I mean, I challenged Richard about the price because I thought it should be him, like, you know, this is worth so much more. Why are you giving this price? But you really felt that it had to be affordable for many, yes. many men. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I want this to be accessible. So it's, exactly. it's 444 US and I like the numbers. It's a numerology it's a really thing. Beautiful number, but I mean, it's completely. Yes, you, know, yes, you did challenge the shit out of me on that. <laughs> of course, when I'm challenging. Thank you, challenging thank you for that, Richard. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, so so it's not going to be about the price. Um, so it's really about you know, I would I would say almost say you know it's an, it's going to be an adventure. You know? mm -hmm. No question about that. And I'm sure. The one, the, the one thing that I wanted to emphasize, mm. like, you know, it's gonna be fun as well. I'm sure there's oh. a lot of laughter. Oh God, yeah, I will not do it. <laughs> this has to be fun. Oh yeah, there. And Brad, my partner in this, he is, he's like a comedian. He is a comedian. He's doing stand-up comedy, and he, I think he's our our next Kyle Cease coming up. Uh, honestly, he's he's an amazing young man, and. Um, I'm grateful that he's part of this uh, this group. Like he brings a a, a a structure, but he's got he's got a humor that 
this yeah it's beautiful stuff I, we i was really touched by what uh the men said in the last round how well we worked together and um we really compliment each other so yes there's a lot of fun here no yeah i, I like fun <laughs> yeah. Yeah. gotta have some fun yeah i know richard thank you so much uh mm -hmm. for all these people uh, watching the, the replay we're going to add the, uh, the, the Facebook pages of uh, Richard in the comments or so that you can actually easily access it. Mm -hmm. And please feel free to actually ask him questions about the course. And you can always come to me if you want to know more about who this guy is. And uh, because I know <laughs> many years. So, okay, Richard, when you Thank come you. to Amsterdam or Europe, let me know. By the time I expect you'll have a big following. And, uh, you know, you will, you know, you'll, you'll be like uh, some kind of celebrity and people will be queuing up to be part of your, your men's work or women's work or hero's work. So it's going to be, I see that. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for that vision. I like that. It feels good. Okay. Hey, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I am going to log off right now. And um, I think you're hosting something tonight, right? Can you tell us what it oh, is? Oh, yes. At, at 4 p.m. Pacific time, there is a Zoom call for anybody that would like to come out and um, learn more. The Zoom code is 519-778-7777. 519-778-7777. And, and you can see that. Post, uh, will you post a recording? There Somewhere or? Um, potentially, yes. Um, we haven't posted the recordings. Last time we did this last week, there were some pretty big shares and a lot of tears. So we decided we were just going to keep that private because it really, there was, it was a beautiful, beautiful, um, yeah, I, it gets me going just thinking about it. It was just such a beautiful piece last week. Okay. So chances are no, but please be there if you can. It's, um, again, it's 4 p.m. Eastern Standard, or, Pacific time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard, and it's on Zoom and on my website there, or on my um, Facebook page, there are uh, event there should show up for it. So okay. come on down. Great yeah. to have you. Just share it on my 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 page on my Facebook okay. page. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Thank All right. you so much, everybody, for being here. I uh, I look forward to the next interview. I have a few people lined up. For some strange reason, I have amazing men all the time as guests. It's not that. <laughs> That's what you're attracting. I know. <laughs> so fortunate. But I want to interview amazing women. And it's just mm. that the men are a little bit more, a, you know, they sort of respond quicker to my <laughs> messages, you know. So, but yeah, if you are on a mission and you want to be interviewed by me, you think there is alignment with our work, you know, please contact me. And I'm going to be, uh, you know, um, going to upload this on YouTube and share it with you. So you can Beautiful. share it. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Lots of love. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Stop.